Well, when a teenager or child loses a loved one, it's often their first experience with death. And that means their parents or caregivers are asked to explain what many of us struggle to understand fully. So there is a group, thankfully, there is a group in Sioux Falls that offers support, not just for kids, but also for the grown-ups who care for them. Here to tell us more about the Sad Isn't Bad program is Executive Director Jill Stavner. Jill, good to have you on the show today. Thank you. What, what is Sad Isn't Bad? Tell us a little bit about your group. Okay. Sad Isn't Bad is a group where we have, as you mentioned, the kids and the caregivers come, and they experience the group situation dealing with grief. And it's important for them to have that group experience because oftentimes they feel like they're alone or they're isolated in their grief and nobody else understands what they're going through. So when they have that group experience, they can meet other people that are going through the same kinds of things. Yeah, so how did, how did the group come to be? How did you, how did you form it? Well, I, didn't part, I wasn't part of forming it, but it started in 2007. And it was started by some people at our Savior's Lutheran Church as well as some parish nurses who were working with adults that were um, dealing with grief, but they realized there wasn't anything for kids. So they started a program um, then to, for the kids and quickly realized that it was important to have the adults and the kids mm -hmm. together. Because what the kids were saying is they don't want to talk to mom or dad about the person who died because mom or dad would get tearful or upset. And yeah. so we realized we needed to join them together. So how, how did you get involved in the group? Well, I got involved in 2011. I've had a passion for people who are going through grief and death and dying. Uh, my husband died uh, almost, well, over 20 years ago of colon cancer, and at that time our son was four years old. And so while he went through some individual counseling at that time, I, what I know now, I, I wish I'd have had a group like this for us to go through together. So four years old was your son. Mm -hmm. Wow. So. Mm -hmm. Can you walk us through some of the things that you learned through that process of dealing with your own personal grief yourself and then trying to manage your, your son as well? Well, and that's, that's the difficult part, and that's what we see oftentimes in the, the people that come to the group is the adults will come thinking, I'm here to help my child. Mm -hmm. And what they don't realize is that they need to go through their own grief in order to help their child, and that's what I learned as well, is that I had to deal with what I was going through or I wasn't any good to my son, and so that was important for me. So is it almost like a two-step process where you've got to, I mean, before you can deal with your child, that you've got to deal with yourself first? I don't know that it, it's a step like that. I think it's definitely acknowledging that you have your own grief and that it's important for you to work through that too as you're going through that with your child. And being able, one of the goals of the program is being able to increase that communication between the adults and the kids because like I said, they don't want to talk about it for fear of making the other one upset and so oftentimes nobody talks about it. Nobody talks about the person who died, nobody talks about the death and then they don't grieve um, in a healthy way because of that. Yeah, so my, my, my common thing is to think about as a parent to be strong, to be maybe macho, to be, uh, you know, to hold back your own emotions as you're not maybe being true to your ch children to see mm -hmm. that you do have feelings as well. Mm -hmm. And so uh, walk us through, uh, you know, I mean, I'm sure you deal with that in mm -hmm. some of these sessions as well. Absolutely. And I think part of that is our culture, because our culture is so fast-paced and we don't deal very well with death and dying that when somebody does die, a lot of times we don't know what to do with it. You know, coworkers don't know how to help. Um, family members oftentimes don't talk about it or have different ways of coping with it, and so that's a challenge. And so what we really try to do is help first identify that what grief is and that grief is the emotions that are natural and normal when you have a loss of any kind. Um, but particularly a death loss, as we're talking about. Mm -hmm. So we help them identify that first grief is normal and what those emotions are and then how you can cope with it. Yeah, and then you've got, like you said, uh, different types of grief, <clears throat> different types of death. You've got you know, people that decide to end their own lives and you've got natural causes of death. So you've got, and, and different ages, this, this whole thing. So how, right. how is your group, who is, who's in your group that's helping manage this process for those that are in need. Okay. Well, our facilitators for the children's group, and that would be the, the elementary and, and adolescent groups, they're required to be masters prepared um, as either counselors or divinity sometimes. Primarily our counselors or our facilitators are school counselors. Um, they work a lot with the kids, and so they know some of those um, dynamics and so forth. 
Um, but we do have some pastors that, that will um, be part of the group, and that's important too. For the adults, we don't require the master's degree for the facilitators, but most of us that do mm -hmm. the adults are uh, master's prepared. So are you, uh, explain the sessions a little bit. So would you have it where you've got the, the parent or, or the, uh, um, the adult with the children and you're doing it together? Or do you, do you sometimes have to do it separate? How do, you, how do you manage it? Well, we invite the families to come at 5.30 on a Tuesday night and we serve a meal, which is really nice to help kind of break the ice a little bit, and then the facilitators get to know the adults, if they're the children's facilitators, and, and back and forth with the different age groups. And it's a nice that parents don't have to rush home from work, feed the kids, yeah. and then get to the group. So it's a little bit more relaxing. It's kind of a nice way to kind of get together. And then after the meal, we break into separate groups. So we have an adult group, an adolescent group, and an elementary school group. Okay. So let's get into how people can find you because you mentioned that the sessions are free and so this mm -hmm. isn't an on-call type of service. You've got sessions that you actually right. work this in. So let's walk through how they can find you and then you've got a session coming up here. Mm -hmm. we, um, the easiest way to find us is through our website which is sadisandbad.com and it has all the contact information there as well as a um, uh, drop-down menu that you can actually register on the site. And it is important that you register because we need to know yeah. about the meal and we need to know about the facilitators and so forth. Um, so you can find us there and we meet uh, four Tuesdays in a row and we typically have a session in the fall, winter and spring. So our next session would be uh, the winter session which starts uh, January 15th. Yeah, good stuff. You're doing a great thing. Well, great service. Thanks it's for It's a wonderful that. group. Yeah. yeah, thank Thanks you. Thanks for being on the show today, Jill. Thank you.